We can't all be absolute stunners, now can we? And unless you're some kind of exquisite oil painting of a human being, then I suggest that you don't get all judgy about anyone else's appearance. Uh, are you getting me? But we at the Fancy Bananas seem to love a good point and stare, so we'll just do it for you. From a spider named after a My Little Pony to a weasel that'll lick you into a trance, here are 20 unique animals you won't believe exist. Number 20. Triops The name of the triops comes from their three-eyed configuration. This freshwater crustacean has a pair of regular eyes and then a third eye which is more simple in its construction and is used to help them to detect light. These ancient heavily armored tadpole-like shrimp are also known as dinosaur shrimp and this, perhaps, obviously, is on the account of their truly ancient status. In fact, these creatures have been around for hundreds of millions of years and they're not shrimp in the strictest of sense of the word since they dwell in freshwater and a shrimp is reservedly saltwater-based being. But they are a kind of dinosaur. These crustaceans have really barely altered in appearance since the first Devonian period, which was said to have been between 419 million to 359 million years ago. This lineage has been pretty consistent since that era, which leads to their dinosaur status. They are what's often referred to as a living fossil, and this essentially means that they've evolved, but less obviously in outward appearances, mostly because they have an effective body that's stood the test of time in their environment. Most of the changes in these species happen beneath the surface rather than on the outer layers. Perhaps this could be one of nature's oddest looking animals. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Sparkle Muffin. Australia has a lot of spiders. In fact, they've basically got all the spiders, especially the most bitey and poisonous and murderous sorts. So the discovery of yet another species of spider is not a very surprising thing, to be honest, but here we are. This time around, we're looking at a species of peacock spider, a member of the Maratus genus, which is now features about 92 members of a species amongst its numbers. The sparkle muffin, despite having a name like a My Little Pony, is one of these peacock spiders. In fact, to be specific, it's a jumping spider that can jump distances of up to 50 times their own size, and these sparkle muffins do it all while looking super snazzy. Well, the males do at least. The females have a black coloration. The males have iridescent patterns, which can vary in color from red to orange to blue, which is quite the dapper dresser. Apparently, Australia has so many flipping species and so much space filled with natural stuff that it's estimated that only about 30% of its biodiversity has actually been officially documented. This means that there may be loads of species species out there that nobody's ever heard of and they're going to need names. What would you name a new species of spider if you happen to find one? Is the My Little Pony style the way to go? Would you be super vain and name it after yourself? Or would you name it after your Nana or your pet guinea pig Twinkle? Let me know each and every one of your fabulous thoughts in the comments section down below. Number 18. Totumundi. Found mainly in parts of South and Central America, Cotamundis are a member of the raccoon family, but they look like nothing else on Earth. These furry animals are tree dwellers, and they've got brown fur, a long snout, and a ring tail, along with a unique nose. Are you intrigued? Well, let's poke around a bit more, shall we? There are four types of Cotamundi out there, the white-nosed Cody, the South American Cody, also known as the ring-tailed, the Western Mountain Cody, and the Eastern Mountain Cody. Very, very cute. <laughs> The mountain ones are generally much smaller in size than the other kinds, and the name Cotamundi is derived from two words, being kua, which means belt, and tim, which means nose in the Tupian languages of the indigenous peoples of South America. All Cody's are excellent climbers. They live in trees and use their tails to balance, rather than to hold onto branches like many other tailed tree dwellers do. Their tails are used, it would seem, as a form of communication, whilst they are in vegetation. They use these appendages as a kind of flag to indicate their own location to other Cody's. Number 17. Jabiru Stork 
This is a truly massive bird. The Jabiru stork is officially the largest flying bird in all of the Americas. They can grow to be anywhere from between 4 to 5 feet tall and have a colossal wingspan which can be from 9 feet to as much as 12 feet wide. That's a standard nightmare bird right there, just on the idea of its sheer scale of those wings flapping alone. Jabiru storks can be found all the way from Mexico to Argentina, and they're famous for building absolutely enormous nests, but they do need them to accommodate the enormous bodies. They use sticks to build their nests and return to them each season, simply adding more and more sticks to the ever-expanding nest. Like when people get hooked on adding extensions to their house. They build these nests near to bodies of water, and this is where they find most of their food. The Jabiru stork will feed on amphibious creatures, fish, and mollusks, but they are also not especially fussy if the food happens to be dead already. This, although kind of gross, also has the benefit of cleaning up the water and is a valuable part of the balanced ecosystem. At present, these birds are not officially endangered, but as humans encroach more and more into their territory, these sensitive animals will find it hard to remain unaffected. Number 16. The Axolotl the funny old axolotl can't help it but look a lot like a willy. A willy with a cute cartoon face and bizarre ears. But you know, you see it as well. Stop being so mature. It's totally hilarious. And yet, the legend of these creatures is also kind of badass. The story of the humble axolotl is that it is actually the Aztec god of fire and lightning who went by the name Zolotl. This god was due to be sacrificed, and for why, nobody can say. but didn't much fancy the idea of that. So the fiery god did what any of us would do. He went and disguised himself as a salamander, because of course he did. That's apparently where we get these awesome little creatures from. So you know, whatever works. The axolotl is unfortunately super endangered, and it's only found in one lake in Mexico City. These creatures grow to be around 10 inches and have a long tail and small funny legs and feet. They retain their larval traits through their whole lives, which basically means that they're eternally young. They could probably make a fortune from that secret, you know? Number 15. Naked Mole Rat Ugh, what on God's green earth is this? This is the horror that's known as the Naked Mole Rat. Now I can see how they managed to come up with that corker of a name, can't you? These poor unfortunate creatures are kind of a burrowing rodent, which is also rather misleadingly known as a sand puppy, and can be found in the Horn of Africa and parts of Kenya. The Naked Mole Rat is an unusual animal, surprisingly not just in appearance either. They're really good at living underground, which is lucky, because if they were to be above ground too much, I think I think all of us humans would be a little well too freaked out. They have specific and unique adaptations which allows them to regulate their body temperature almost completely ectothermically. This means that they are the only mammal that's cold-blooded, and it's also resistant to pain. It doesn't appear to even feel pain at all in its skin, and has very few needs, also being able to live with very little oxygen, all on the account of its remarkably low respiratory rate. The naked mole rat also seems to display high resistance to disease, and has a very long lifespan, but it's still one of the scariest looking animals I've ever beheld. What do you think? Is it going to give you nightmares? <laughs> Number 14. The Pangolin Although these bizarre creatures have more than a whiff of reptile about them, they're actually mammals. So there. Even though they are mammals, it's easy to see how they might be confused with reptiles. Pangolins are covered in scales. They use this super scaly body to protect themselves from would-be predators, all by curling into a tight ball, and their sharp and pointy scales are usually enough to send the danger packing. These kooky little creatures are often called scaly anteaters, and it doesn't take much to figure that one out. That's right, they eat ants. Oh, and termites and larvae and other things as well, and they do this with an extremely long and very sticky tongue. In fact, the pangolin's tongue can grow to lengths that exceed their whole entire body. However, life as a pangolin isn't all tonguing and snaffling ants. These are some of the world's most trafficked animals, and they've suffered for many years as a result. Pangolins are in high demand in some countries, especially in Vietnam and China, where their meat is considered to be a delicacy and their scales are used in folk medicine. So it does kind of suck to be a pangolin. Fortunately, there are now more laws all over the world being put into place to try and protect this unique species. Number 13. Echidna. 
The ectona is a weird creature whose name I probably mispronounced, and it's unlike any other mammal that all science people seem to be able to be a little bit flummoxed by. Sometimes called the spiny anteater, this creature is not actually an anteater like the ones that we all know and love, but it does have a long nose and it does eat bugs, so the name is not entirely ill-placed. Anyways, even though this creature is a mammal, the female apparently lays eggs, so that really is a head-scratcher. And if you add to that the fact that these animals are pretty quiet and generally mind their own beeswax, they've been a bit under the radar for all of comprehension. However, this creature is also another species that's remained unchanged since prehistoric times. So somehow, despite all the difficulties of doing such a thing, this elusive animal has figured out how to stay alive even while other species around it were becoming extinct. This one's got a long nose which is called a beak that is excellent for smelling, a small face, and an excellent sense of hearing. They feature dark fur, but this is more or less completely covered by loads of barbless quills, which are also known as spines. These animals have short legs with extra long claws that they use to dig out bugs from within the dirt, and they're especially partial to termites. Number 12. Bilby the bilby is another Australian animal. Well, it would be with a name like that, now wouldn't it? However, this is also an animal with a survival problem. Bilbies are small furry animals with long pink ears and gray fur, a bit like a weird mouse rabbit. They have inhabited Australia for almost 15 million years, and during that time, they could be found on at least 70% of the Australian mainland, but not so much anymore. You want to take a guess why? Well, yeah, it's people because it's always people. In fact, there used to be two species of the bilby, the greater one and the lesser one, and the lesser one has already gone extinct all the way back in the 1950s. The aboriginal people of Australia coexisted with the bilby for about 60,000 years without any problems or trouble at all, and that's when the European settlers would arrive, and within 200 years, it's half extinct and the remaining ones just struggle to survive. But on the flip side, these creatures are no oil painting. They have more than a touch of the possum about them, and frankly, nothing much of the fluffy bunny wabbit. These nocturnal animals use their long snouts to dig out tubers, termites, grubs, spiders, and fungi, and they'll also eat grass seeds with their long tongues, and although they do have rubbish vision, they're really good at smelling stuff. Number 11. Alligator Gar an alligator gar is a kind of freshwater fish that's native to North America. They have a long, narrow torpedo of a body with a short, wide snout and rows of nasty, vicious teeth. These fish are fearsome ambush predators that stalk the waters of lakes and hunt of fish, waterfowl, and small mammals, and they usually measure to be about five or six feet long, so they're kind of large, but generally nothing to write home about. Or that's what people think most of the time. These things can also get huge. The very biggest of them that's ever been caught and recorded was a 327-pound monster-sized fish that was caught in Mississippi. The name gar comes from an old Anglo-Saxon word meaning spike or lance. And oddly enough, some Native Americans used the scales and head of the alligator gar to make weapons. These animals have been kicking around for a longer than any of these people or languages, though. There are fossil records for creatures which have strikingly similar characteristics from 100 million years ago. And the modern alligator gar? Well, it's retained many of them, just like the cool ability to breathe in either air or water. Number 10. Capybara Although closely related to guinea pigs, like my pet guinea pig Twinkle, capybaras do not share their size with them. These are the world's biggest rodents, and yet they can only measure to be about two feet high from toe to shoulder and weigh as much as 143 pounds. So these cute creatures are no lightweights. The capybara is native to South America where they live in forests, food plains, and wetlands, so it should come as no surprise that these funny creatures are excellent swimmers. They've partially webbed toes as well. <laughs> These pig-shaped rodents live in large groups, partly as a kind of protection against predators, because they can be eaten by loads of bigger animals and some smaller ones as well. However, they're also a pretty sociable creature. Perhaps one of the more weird and gross things about the capybara is their diet. They do eat a whole ton of different plants and grasses and need to gnaw all day long to keep their teeth under control, as like with other rodents, the capybara's teeth never stop growing. It does sound like a very regular vegetarian diet, however, these guys have a morning habit that might make you feel a little bit icky because they eat their own poo, but only in the morning. Apparently, this is when it contains the most protein. Ugh. It's also on the account of their diet being grass and pretty hard to digest, so eating their poop, well, that gives them the delicious opportunity to digest their dinner twice. How lovely. Number 9. 
Vampire Bat. Vampire bats are exactly what they sound like. They are indeed bats that do indeed feed on blood. This small species of bat is native to the tropics of Central and South America. There are a couple of different kinds of vampire bat, but the characteristic that they share is that they like to suck blood. <laughs> so these are actually the only animals that are known to have evolved to feed exclusively on blood. They've adapted to have the perfect equipment for this creepy purpose. That weird nose, well, it's a sort of sensor that can detect where the blood is flowing closest to the skin in their prey. And the prey that they can choose may be up to 10,000 times the size of this miniature monster. They, like other bats, use echolocation to find the prey, and then they'll land on the ground close to the animal, but never on it. Using their sensor nose, they then choose the best spot to get the most efficient feed, make a bite with their super sharp front teeth, this has all the chemicals in their saliva that prevent the blood from clotting, and also numbs the area around the bite. So then the vampire bat can feed without being detected. And then they just let the blood flow. They don't actually suck the blood. Their feeding is way more efficient and they simply lap it up as it flows out of the wound. These bats are indefinitely creepy, but also kind of cool. Number eight, Saga Antelope. This critically endangered saga antelope was once spread far across the vast swaths of Eurasia, and it's said that they could also be found in North America and the British Isles all the way back in the dinosaur times. But sadly for the old antelope, this is no longer the case. There are so few of these left in the wild now that they're actually teetering upon the brink of extinction. But the ones that are left, well, they're some weird-looking creatures. Boggly-eyed, bloated-nostrilled, and awkward-shaped bodies seem to be the defining characteristics of this particular antelope. Antelope. Their odd noses are the result of a perfect adaptation to the harsh, arid environment of semi-desert life. And that nose, well, it's designed to filter out the dust and sand that blows about during the summer months. Their nostrils face downwards, which helps with filtration, but in the winter, the cold air is then taken in through that same system and heats it up before it's carried into the animal's lungs. It's all clever stuff, but apparently not clever enough to keep these animals thriving and numerous in the contemporary world. It is a bummer for the saga antelope, but apparently these are yet another creature that's prized in Chinese traditional medicine, so you could see where this story is going already. The once ubiquitous saga is now wallowing at the edge of extinction because it's been hunted and poached to death for its horns, which are valued in much the same way as those of the rhinoceros. This practice has almost wiped out so many animals at this point, and yet these horns really contain little more than the equivalent of the components in your fingernail. Number seven, Chupacabra. It's about time we mixed it up a bit and did something weird. That's why you love us here at the Fancy Banana after all. You should always expect the unexpected. So next up for your lucky eyeballs is the Chupacabra. Yes, that mythical creature from Latin American folklore. Not a real creature, but a distinctly weird looking one nonetheless. If you believe the accounts of the sightings anyway, the name Chupacabra comes from the word chupar, which in Spanish means suck, and cabra, which means goat. So there it is. This is a fearsome goat suck of all the legend. What it does look like in the pictures that I'm showing you, well, the chupacabra is often depicted as a kind of dog-like animal, but with vampiric tendencies, and they're usually depicted as being completely hairless. This, I think, makes them infinitely creeper than most other potential features, like those bald cats. You know, those things are definitely up to no good. Anyways, wherever there's been a mysterious attack on livestock in certain parts of the world, it's often the chupacabra that's going to be blamed, but who really knows? Could it be real? Have you actually seen one? Let's get into this in the comments section down below, shall we? And we can figure out this mystery together like a bunch of flipping Columbos. Number 6. Mata Mata Turtle the Mata Mata turtle is a resident of South America. It's an unusual looking sort of creature with an especially knobbly shell and a large flat head with a wide mouth and long snout. The Mata Mata shell is what makes this chap stand out from the crowd. It's large and gnarly with big spherical cone shapes and knobbles poking out of it. This poor old turtle, while well, he's no oil painting, his neck is flat and wide and he's covered with warts and bumpy skin. He has a triangular shaped squashed head and a long snout that he uses as a snorkel. They have eyes on the sides of their weird heads, but they also have very poor vision, using instead their fleshy flaps on the side of the head to sense movements in the water. They can feel vibrations, and may warn them of a predator nearby, and they also have extremely sensitive hearing. Number 5. The Okapi 
A vague relative of the giraffe, the okapi is a long-legged hoofed animal that also chews the cud. But other than those shared characteristics, it really is a unique-looking creature. Found predominantly in the rainforests of the Democratic Republic of Congo, this animal was unknown to the scientific animal prodding community until as late as 1901. That's likely because it was simply busy just minding its own business in a place that even now has parts that are unmapped. The okapi has a shorter neck and shorter legs than the giraffe, and it's dark brown, almost a purplish black color in places, along with white. It has striped legs and a long tongue, and the male of the species is generally about 8 feet tall. And the female? Well, she's usually slightly taller and heavier. I mean, what do you think they look like? Are they a mix of giraffe, zebra, and cow? What the actual heck is going on here? Give me your super valid opinions about it all in the comments section down below. I dare you. Number 4. Bird of Paradise Now, you know that something's probably pretty fancy if it's given the word superb in front of the rest of its name, and so it is for the greater superb bird of paradise. These birds are generally massive show-offs. In fact, the males, it's always the male, isn't it, are famous for all of their frilly fancy dancing and elaborate feather flapping displays. These birds are black with an iridescent green feathery crown on their heads and a lot of other fancy feathers on their backsides. It is these guys that really know what it means to shake a tail feather. There is a very low population of female birds of paradise, so for this reason, the guys seems to go to extra lengths to get involved with the scarcely available ladies. They have developed some of the most elaborate mating rituals in all of the animal kingdom. They will first prepare their dance floor by meticulously sweeping the area, clearing it of branches and whatever other debris there may be. And next, we'll start with all of the hollering, a loud call to try and get the female bird's attention. After this, the dancing then begins. Look at what these guys can do. He has all the moves and he's not afraid to bust them out either. And he can keep this up for days upon end. I'm exhausted just watching it. Number three, frilled lizard. Lizards are so very cool. They come in so many weird and wonderful shapes and sizes, colors and varieties, and this one is definitely deserving of the weirdness crown. The frilled lizard is so-called on the account of the rather fetching collar or frill that it wears around its neck. Most of the time, this particular part of its anatomy lays flat, just gives the creature a certain sort of helmety style. But when it gets stressed out or feels threatened, the frilled lizard will then raise itself up on its hind legs, open its mouth, fold out that big frilly flap to encircle its entire head. It's going to hiss and generally make its displeasure quite evident indeed. It's designed to intimidate any potential attacker and for the most part doesn't really seem relatively effective. I don't know about you, but if this lizard began any of this shiz with me, I would be running away really fast, trying hard not to think about Jurassic Park. Number 2. The AA. Native to the rainforests of Madagascar, the AA is a species of lemur which has to be one of the weirdest looking creatures and primates on the entire planet. The nocturnal AA has such a surprising look that when people first discovered it in the mid-19th century, they actually believed it to be a kind of massive squirrel. But then again, people were apparently constantly getting things rather upside down during that period of time, so it's no wonder that they later realized that this thing was in fact a species all of its own, closely related to the lemur but still just just a bit different. The AA's unfortunate appearance has led to its almost extinction. These animals are subject to some rather unlucky superstitious beliefs. The local people on the island of Madagascar believe that to even set eyes upon one will cast bad fortune on the unlucky viewer. But it seems that the solution to this problem is far more worse for the AA than the human with the eyeballs, because basically they just kill them at first sight, so as to attempt to dispel any troublesome bad luck. Not so much for the dead AA, I should imagine. As a result, these days, these strange animals are one of the most endangered animals in all of Madagascar. Number 1. Fossa this is a bit of a strange one because the fossa seems, at first glance anyway, to be some sort of cat. But apparently it's actually a relative of the mongoose? Well, whatever they say, I'm not a science nerd by far, so what do I know? These are yet another creature that's only found on the island of Madagascar, and they are, really, not exactly much like anything else anywhere else at all. They have a tail like a monkey, paws and claws like a cat, and a weasel-esque face. I mean, what the heck is it? There's actually relatively little known about the fossa. They're carnivores and excellent hunters of medium-sized and small creatures, and they hunt by ambush, 
killing with one sharp bite. The fossa has inspired more legends and tales in folklore than actual accounts of its real behaviors. It's feared for allegedly breaking into houses and stealing babies. Oh, and for licking people when they're asleep and putting them into a trance so that they can then disembowel them. It sounds like an absolute charmer, I have to say. Thanks for your excellent company on this trek through the weirder looking animals on the planet. It was great having you along. Which of these animals is going to make a cameo appearance in your next nightmare? Please let me know all about your thoughts in the comment section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you, hopefully, next time. I love you!